Over several days in April 2022, the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, or the NWMO for short, successfully completed a full-scale demonstration of the engineered barriers that will safely contain and isolate Canada's used nuclear fuel in a deep geological repository to protect people and the environment for generations to come. This important safety and technical achievement required more than eight years of preparation by the NWMO's team of leading technical experts and Canadian engineering partners. Nuclear energy has powered Canadian communities for decades, and the planned underground repository is part of Canada's plan to safely manage the resulting used nuclear fuel over the long term. Comprised of a network of tunnels and storage rooms, the repository will be built over 500 meters underground surrounded by a natural shield of solid rock. In behind these doors is the full-scale emplacement trial that the engineering team has put together demonstrating how we can actually put used fuel containers underground safely. We really want to share our work. We want to make sure that Canadians and Indigenous peoples can see what it's all about and get a real sense of the technology behind it. The emplacement trial is a culmination of several aspects of the work that we're doing at the NWMO to demonstrate that we can package used fuel into containers, package it again into bentonite boxes, and then place it into the underground. Obviously, we're not in the underground here, but we're doing surface facility demonstrations. So the, the mock emplacement room right here is a replica of what the room would look like underground. Technical teams constructed a life-size model of one of the repository's underground storage rooms, with the exact dimensions and interior walls lined with simulated rock tiling. During the process, Extremely durable copper used fuel containers are encased in protective layers called buffer boxes. Made of compressed bentonite clay, the boxes provide additional protection against corrosion or degradation. Bentonite is an extraordinarily effective barrier to water flow, so it is well suited for ensuring the strength and durability of the used fuel containers over millennia, even through the next ice age. Once the boxes are in place, the entire room will be filled from floor to ceiling with granular bentonite to complete the barrier system. A lot of this started on whiteboards and then they moved to CAD models and now we're finally seeing prototype in the flesh, so to speak, and seeing it actually perform and, and really seeing years of work from NWMO team uh, themselves as well as our Canadian vendors. Canadian National Labs working together, working in tandem to, to bring these designs to life. A highly customized forklift is used to move the bentonite boxes into the room. Each load weighs 8,000 kilograms, heavier than a large elephant. The forklift has been fitted with a special attachment designed specifically for the boxes. It also has grippers on either side with inflatable airbags to secure the box in place. The equipment is driven remotely by an operator from outside the room and uses sensors to set the boxes down gently and with impressive precision. Next, a specially designed gap filling machine is used to fill all remaining space between the boxes and the walls of the room with granular bentonite clay in chip form. The equipment was purpose built to fill the room with sufficient loose material to achieve the high density required by the repository's design. As the buffer boxes and gap fill material were added, 3D scanning equipment was used to measure the volume of material in the room. After the demonstration was complete, the room was dismantled to carefully evaluate the quality and performance of the engineered barrier system. It's been a very good couple of days. We've, uh, we're actually uh, where we thought we'd be. We've had no surprises, so the work's been very well planned. We're achieving the results that we wanted to achieve, which is very encouraging. We have the most dedicated staff that I've ever worked with. I mean, people are invested in this project, they want to do what's right for Canadians, and that's really what motivates and pushes people. 